In this video, we'll take a look at a quick swift tip to make your life easier when dealing with optionals. Before we jump into a playground here, make sure you hit that like button down below, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's jump right in. So we've got open up Xcode here, and we're gonna work in a playground, makes our life simpler. And I'll stick with the blank template, and we'll call this uh, better optionals, super creative. I'll save it onto my desktop. And once this decides to load up, let me just expand our Xcode window and let's take a example case so we can actually figure out the benefit of what we're going to learn today. So let's say we have a function and that function is handle user name and this takes in the actual name of the user and let's say it is a string optional. Now, Perhaps I want to do something with this name, but before I want to do something with the name, I want to do two things. I want to verify that, you know, let's say this is a user input. I want to verify that the string is not nil, aka either unwrapped or check its nullability. And I also want to verify that it's not an empty string, right? Because an empty string, while not nil, is still not really helpful for us. So there's two ways we can go about doing this. One is as follows. So we can say if name isn't nil, and name doesn't equal this, we can proceed. Uh, conversely, we can also say guard let name, and we can shorthand this with the new Swift shorthand for uh, optional unwrap, or we can just do it this way. So we can say if we have a name and the name isn't empty, otherwise we're gonna wanna return here and we can proceed. So both of these cases are a little verbose, right? But they both have their own benefits. In this case, we get a reference to the actual value of this unwrapped optional. And in this case, we just do the conditionality but don't actually get the unwrapped value. So this case is fine if we need the actual name string, but let's say we don't need it. We just wanna verify some type of form validation, right? That, hey, we can actually go about doing this. Um, so let's improve this, right? So this is what we're gonna figure out how to improve today. So what we're going to introduce is a extension onto a generic optional where the wrapped value is a string and we'll find a better way to do this. So I am going to write an extension here and we wanna extend optionals where the wrapped thing is of type string. Now before even getting further into this, the first thing that I wanna draw your attention to is this extension itself is a little verbose and we can actually make this simpler and easier to follow. We can actually say extend optional where the generic thing inside the optional is a string and you can actually even take it one step further and this is a newer thing. You can say just extend string with the question mark aka optional and back in the day the compiler wasn't good enough or smart enough or uh, built in a way such that it can interpret this but now it can which is awesome. So in an case where we have a optional string we're going to say we have a computed property we're going to say is nil or empty which is going to give us a boolean. And what we'll return is, we're gonna return if self uh, equals nil or self uh, doesn't equal a string. So let's make sure I got my logic right. So this is is nil or empty. Uh, so we're gonna say equals equals empty actually. So now instead of doing this thing up here, we'll comment this out, what I can do is I can say uh, name is nil or empty and we care about the inverse of this. So if the name isn't nil or the name isn't empty, we can actually go and proceed here and continue logic. So the takeaway from this rather brief video is there are a lot of cases when you're dealing with optionals where you don't necessarily wanna unwrap it, you don't necessarily wanna bind it, you just wanna know if the thing isn't nil. And for those of you that come from an objective C world, you might remember that we do a lot of these if else checks of, you know, if this pointer isn't nil or if this class is of type of this class, and there's a lot of just conditionality and you don't necessarily need to do it in a verbose way um, nowadays in Swift. You can use these extensions to really clean up your code uh, and it actually makes it far more readable, right? So versus reading this versus reading like what the heck is going on here. In this case, I have to actually infer and assume that all I'm doing here is checking the nullability and the fact that it's not empty. And this kind of brings up the question of like, well, why? Whereas this computed property here is a little more obvious of I just care if it's nil or empty. And in this case, the inverse of that, not nil or not empty. 
So that is all I've got. What I'll leave with here is I just use string as an example here, but you could actually apply this to a variety of cases, right? So if you wanted to uh, provide this functionality on an array, and we might want an optional array actually. So let's say we have an optional, uh, and we care where the optional in this is going to be an array. So we're gonna say where the actual wrapped value is the array. So let's do this. And in this case, we have an array. You can do the exact same thing here. So you might have an optional collection and it might be an empty collection. And I said the magic word there, we can actually even take it one step further and extend an optional collection. And this gets a little hairy because collection itself, I believe is a protocol. You can actually extend optional sequence as well. And you can go even lower and lower into foundation where how Apple has implemented this. You'll just need to be a little careful with multiple protocol constrained generics here, but I won't go too far into that since it starts to get a little out of scope for this video, uh, especially. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Drop a like before clicking away. It really means a lot. It helps out the channel, helps us continue to grow and make videos. Drop a comment and let me know if you've used this before, if you have any other extensions for optionals that you find useful. As always, subscribe, connect on LinkedIn. I try to be fairly active there. Follow on Twitter. Let me know if you have video suggestions. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.